If you're someone that wants to play the demon in Evil Dead the game, but you're a little overwhelmed and you feel like there's just a lot to manage and you don't know where to start, this video is going to be perfect for you. What we're going to do is we're going to look through an example match and I'm going to break down all the different things you should be paying attention to, why you're going to be doing what you're doing, and really the general process of what you should be thinking, okay? And one of the first things you think about is which one should I select? Warlord, Puppeteer, or Necromancer? In my opinion, the one that is easiest is the Warlord. I think this one is the easiest because it's very boss focused. Henrietta is so strong and she can win the entire game for you. Now, something you're gonna see a lot of though is you're gonna see a lot of people playing Necromancer. Reason being is because it's one of the quickest ways to end a match, especially since all the survivors don't know what they're doing right now. Because a really quick way to end the game is to use your special ability, the Flautist, and then just stab everything with your skeletons and then everybody dies. By the way, the really easy counter to the Necromancer is just listen for the dude to do to do on the flautist and take out the flautist but until people learned that really fast quick wins with the necromancer and then finally we have the puppeteer which is somebody who really focuses on possessions which is really fun if you like taking over other people or you like controlling your demons a lot puppeteers for you but again if you're really brand new and you're really struggling warlord is probably the easiest choice because no matter what you do in the whole game henrietta can probably take it home for you so what I have here is a really good example match to teach you a lot of different things about Demon, okay? So let's go ahead and press play here and I'll start talking through things as we see it. So immediately what you want to do is you're going to see I bring up my map. And the reason why you want to bring up your map right away is because you don't know where to go. You have no idea where the survivors are and the game's not going to tell you unless they mess up. And they will mess up, you'll see it. So what you can do in the meantime is you can prioritize locations that you know they're eventually going to go. You know, no matter what, when you're demon, that they eventually have to go to the dagger, and they eventually have to go to the Necronomicon pages. So you can orient yourself in that direction and start setting up traps around those locations because you know they'll be valuable later in the game. And why are we going to set up traps? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our UI here and learn a couple of things. So immediately what you're going to see is we have a bar at the bottom of the screen, and that is your infernal energy. That is basically your economy. It's how you go ahead and do actions. So you see how it says set trap 35? I needed to have 35 infernal energy in order to do that. You collect energy by zipping around and picking up these orbs. Another really important thing to pay attention to is that bottom right hand corner. You see anytime I pick up an orb, I get more threat level points. That's how you're going to level up. You're going to pick up orbs to increase your infernal energy, but also you're going to be laying down traps. So next time I lay down a trap here, go ahead and take a look at the bottom right hand corner. You'll see it jumps up a little bit. So this is a really good way to level up your character very quickly to get more threat level points. And this is really the only way you're going to get it done until you start finding the survivors. Okay, so you got to really just Pound this out as fast as you can. And it makes sense to do it around the dagger and the pages because you know they got to go there. All right? Now, there's a couple of other icons on the page, which actually I'll go over real quick so you can understand them a little bit. I accidentally pressed my Q button here. But right here is your character's ability or your demon's ability. It's the Q button. The survivors have a very similar thing with their Q button. And then on this side, it's a charge. And we'll talk about the charge in a little bit. But this is a very powerful thing that you need to be paying attention to. Right here is your basic units, and right here is your elite units, then right here is your boss. They're all locked right now because you can unlock them later in the game as you upgrade your threat level, and then you unlock them. And you'll see that a little bit later as we run into it, but I just want to introduce it now so you see it coming when we get there. Now you can see our infernal energies at about 123. We're not passively gaining it. You can eventually passively gain it, but not until later in the game. Now right here is this threat level menu I was just talking about. Very similar to the pink F if you're doing anything with Survivor, but you have Infernal Energy, Possession, Portal Basic, Portal Elite, Boss, Demon Vision, and Traps. Now, all of these are going to be a little bit different depending on the type of demon that you play. For instance, the Puppeteer has a very different Infernal Energy layout than the Necromancer does or the Warlord does, so these will be prioritized based on your style of play and also the demon that you're playing. So Infernal Energy is going to be good for economy to make it so you can keep doing more things and spending more things. Traps are really good to go ahead and increase the fear level of the survivors. And I actually really like going traps early. That's one of the ways I like to play. And then the Portal Basic unlocks this icon right here so you can make basic units. The Portal Elite unlocks the elite units and the boss unlocks the boss. You get the boss at level 10. Okay, and Demon Vision allows you to see where the survivors are, especially when their fear starts to go up, and upgrading your Demon Vision allows you to see them faster. I don't use Demon Vision too often, but that's what it does. And again, I usually go traps early. Another really important thing just happened is that somebody left the match. 
If you get good at playing demon, get used to it. Because a lot of people right now are rage quitting. I, it's almost every other match that somebody just leaves because they're pouting. So get used to it. It's going to be part of your experience. Part of the reason why I wanted to include it in the video. But more importantly, that left-hand side of the screen provides you a lot of information. Such as if somebody starts driving a car. They messed up. They shouldn't have started driving a car this early in the game. Because it lets me know exactly where they are when I'm playing Demon. Big mistake. Don't get into a car if you're a survivor until you need to get into a car because they just know where you are. Or if the demon has already found you, then start using your car. But until then, the car just really gets gets you in trouble because now I can go over there and start harassing them, okay? So since I know where they are now, I can look at my map and go, oh, well, there she is. She's in the railway loop. Let's start heading over there. I had enough time to set up some traps around the dagger, which is sweet, but I'm not going to sit here and go over to the pages because right now I just want to go after the survivors. That's my top priority. I can stall the game. I can use up their resources. I can just mess with them. I can start building up my threat level. There's a lot of good reasons to go after the survivors immediately because really all you can do is increase your threat level by placing traps until you see them. But when you see them, you can scare them because they'll run into your traps. You can down them, which will increase your threat level a lot. You can kill them, which increases it even more. Going to the survivors is a really, really good play because it just messes with them. That's the whole point of this anyway, is that you're trying to stop them, harass them, get in their way. <laughs> so we're going to start doing that. And we're actually going to toy with them a little bit because we can. And there's only three of them. So I'm going to start setting up traps since I'm getting a little bit closer in case they were to come this way and run into me. But it looks like they're actually just driving car into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. But the game's new, so you're going to see a lot of weird stuff. I'm really curious to see what happens. Ha starts happening as people really get good at the game. But early on, you're going to have a great time playing Demon. So if you're nervous about playing Demon, don't be. This is the best time to play Demon because people have no idea what they're doing. And let me tell you, they really have no idea what they're doing. So after watching a video like this, you're probably going to be able to stomp through just about anyone. Now we're going to find them in the woods here doing who knows what. I think they're all having a kumbaya by the fire here. And we're just going to follow them around a little bit because we don't need to pounce on them right away. There's no real rush. We're just sitting here trying to eye them up, see where they're at. They're going to tell us where the map pieces are just because they start walking towards the map pieces, right? Now, I think what I might end up doing is clicking Portal Basic purely for the reason for me to spawn something so you guys can see it. I don't know if I would typically go Portal Basic here. It is a good move on the Necromancer in particular because they can use that Flautist. But I tend to be more of a traps guy. Play how you want. There's a bunch of different successful ways to play it. Now, something that just happened there is you see that little red aura on the left-hand side. That means that Cheryl, in particular, is able to be possessed. If they are red, not only does it make it really easy to see them, but that means that they are able to be possessed. Now, it costs money to possess them, and when you possess something, or a player or one of your creatures, your infernal energy constantly drains. So be cautious that you don't mess up your infernal energy just to get a couple of seconds out of a possession. Okay? So I'm not actually going to take over Cheryl right here right now because it wouldn't really do a whole lot for me. Or maybe I do and maybe I shoot them. I don't know. Either way, I wouldn't take over Cheryl right now because there's not a whole lot of value there. I'd take her over. What would I do with her? So I actually go ahead of where I think she's going and then I'm going to start setting up traps so she runs into stuff. And I can't get through the window. They found a piece of the map already. That's fine. doesn't matter. So what I might end up doing here is placing a portal down and then I'm going to place my flautist right away because that's where all the power of the necromancer is. Okay, again, pay attention. If the flautist is up, you'll see a red aura around the skeleton's head. This is all necromancer stuff. You'll see a red aura around the unit's heads and you'll hear the do 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 So that means you can go ahead and just womp them for a ton of extra damage and you have a ton of extra defense. Like you can see I'm hitting him for like 119, 131, 143. We're just absolutely shredding her. Something else to know, by the way, is that each survivor unit has a different amount of HP. So the support units like Cheryl tend to be a little bit squishier, which make them easier to take down. And you might want to prioritize the support unit because they keep everybody else alive anyway. So since Cheryl ran off on her own, big doofus, we went ahead and <laughs> we went ahead and just capitalized on it because you don't need a whole lot of units to take someone down when they're soloed off like that, especially if they're a weaker unit like a support. And again, the <laughs> The flautist is so strong. That little dude playing the flute. He makes your units so strong. So what we're going to do now, since we downed someone, is we're going to puppy guard him a little bit. Because if you might notice in the bottom right-hand corner, our threat level went up quite a bit once we downed her. Well, the threat level is going to go up even higher if we manage to fully kill her. Not only 
will we get more threat level? It'll make it so they have to go revive her, which is a big pain in the butt for them. So we're just kind of getting in the way. And we're getting in the way of Ash, but you see how I think, what, Kelly's running off to go revive her? So we go chase down Kelly because we don't want to let Cheryl get revived because we want to get those extra points. So just protecting your kill, basically. Not, not really complicated. You're just going ahead and making it hard on them. And you can see she's bleeding out. I'm just kind of watching that in the distance, just trying to stay alive and be a pain in the butt. Kelly was actually smart and shot the flautist to make it so I'm weaker now. But very soon, you'll see that they're about to bleed out, and we got a bunch more threat levels. So now we can upgrade ourselves even more. And one of them's disconnected, one of them's dead. Things are looking pretty bad for them. If we wanted to, we could end the match right here, because we actually have Ash cornered. He's low on HP. He's also bleeding out. So just like that, the Necromancer can just take over a whole match and destroy everyone. It's not that hard, right? I know it seems scary, but it's not that bad. Now, something important just happened here, so let's go ahead and go backwards and talk through it, because this is a really, really good way to help snowball a powerful move you took on the survivors here. So, you can see my Infernal Energy is at 7 out of 250 underneath the player here, so it's actually really low, so that's not good for me. But a really easy way to get a lot of Infernal Energy back is to use your C. So what you do with the C button here, or the charge, is you hold down that button. It might be different on controller. You hold down that button, and it charges up. And once it's fully charged, you can turn very slowly and then try to aim it at a survivor. If you hit the survivor or multiple survivors, you get a ton of infernal energy. So we'll watch it one more time, and you'll see that process happen here. I'm going to get a ton of infernal energy because I hit her with the C. Also, her fear is going to skyrocket because of it. So charge it up. Ba-bam. Her fear goes up a bunch. We got a ton of infernal energy. Oh my god, it really goes up. Look at that fear. And then we're in a good spot again. So if we wanted to, we could pounce on her. We, I could have spawned a unit behind her. But I think what we're going to do here is let them recover. Because there's more things I wanted to show you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sitting here showing you all the different things. All the, yeah. Point to get all the things. You see how clicking Portal Elite unlocks the Portal Elite. I'm going to put more traps on. So anytime I run into a trap, I'm actually going to make an Elite unit. I haven't put anything into my economy yet, but I think we might start doing that since we have a bunch of points. Because after three levels, we can go ahead and start regenerating points passively, which is really good for our economy. I also think that right about now, my cat jumped on my desk. So I had to go ahead and get my cat off my desk. And then I went ahead and upgraded everything. So we're going to let them recover a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the game. And we're actually going to let them revive Cheryl so that we can, yeah, so that we can see what that looks like. And yeah, again, the, the match is already in our control. There's not a whole lot they can do. Someone DC'd right away and the, they pretty much lost at that point if you know what you're doing. So something I'm doing right now is just collecting a little bit more infernal energy. This is a really advisable tactic after you go ahead and leave a big pounce on them. There's not really a good time for you to do anything. Your infernal energy is too low to place another unit and then go ahead and possess it because it'll just get taken out right away. But now since they ran into a trap or they should have ran into that trap, we could have pounced on them with that. But since the trap didn't work, we're just going to go ahead and let them revive. They'll bring back Cheryl, and then we can start playing with them again. All right, so Cheryl's back up. They're all here. And again, we're just sitting here waiting for another really good opportunity. The match is so much in your control when you play Demon if you got just a basic idea of what to do. Again, if you're a little discouraged or you're a little intimidated by it, it's really not that bad. You can see it right here. We're sitting here messing with them the whole time. If they'd have had that extra person, it'd probably be the same story anyway, unless they all really know what they're doing which is kind of rare right now. So what we're doing now is it seems like they're running down to this location. You can kind of see where they're going on the minimap. So I'm starting to set up traps where I think they're going to go. And then hopefully they end up running into them. We can spawn a bunch of things around them and then end the match that way. So yeah, just set up a bunch of traps, <laughs> get ahead of them. We have the infernal energy for it. If we don't have the infernal energy for it, we have a couple options. We can either just find more orbs or we can use our charge skill again. Cause I think it takes about two minutes for it to come back. But they're walking over here. Something I can do now is possess Kelly if I wanted to, which I don't know if I do. Oh, yeah. So when you possess someone, a couple of things happen. One, you can take over their body and shoot the enemy team. Another thing that'll happen is she's going to take a lot of damage when we get back out of her. You see how she took all that damage on Blue Frosty? That's another big perk if you take over somebody who's low on HP. You can basically down them just by taking them over. We're going to go ahead and get a bunch of Infernal Energy back by scaring two of them and also just raise their fear level a bunch. And we're good on energy again. We took over the tree because the trees are really good at raising fear levels. And we also actually downed them. I didn't know that the trees did damage. But what we see here is Kelly is over by herself up here in the fire tower. And then these two goofuses are over by the fire just by themselves. And since Ash went down, Cheryl's fresh meat. So we're just going to pounce on Cheryl. So we're just going to spawn a couple of units around Cheryl. Make the flout to show up again because it buffs everything. And then they can't do anything. Cheryl can't handle this. She's not made for it. Ta-da. 
just gonna try dodging away. Dodging's a really good thing to do to try to get away from units, but yeah, Cheryl doesn't have enough juice. She's not made for that kind of fighting. And you can see how much damage you... Cheryl has like, I don't know, 900 HP by default. She can raise it a little bit, but she only has like 900. So if we're sitting here, we're hitting them for 130 apiece with basic units, and you can make a lot of basic units, you can see how quickly the Necromancer gets really overwhelming. I think if the Flautist isn't up, that 130 damage goes down to like 80. So it's a huge buff that you're getting from the Flautist. And we have a ton of Infernal Energy to spend right now, or a ton of Infernal Upgrade points, because we just keep downing them and killing them. So we're super overleveled. They've hardly done anything, and we could just end this whenever we want to. So I think what we're going to do is we got a couple of points in the boss and we're going to have Kelly walk on over to them to try to revive them because, again, part of what you're trying to do as Demon is think, well, what are they going to do next so I could be prepared for it? And, well, what's her next move going to be? Probably revive her teammates because she doesn't want to just do it by herself because she'll be screwed. So we can go ahead and just pounce on her when she goes ahead and puts herself in a vulnerable position like that. And I think we just end up using Evil Ash to do that. So my guess is since the Flautus just came back up, she's going to run over to their souls. I'm going to make a flash to show up, spawn Evil Ash, make a bunch of units with Evil Ash, because that's one of his abilities is that he can spawn a skeleton army. Yep, there's the Flautist. Spawn Evil Ash. And I'm going to raise some units. And then we'll just finish her. There's nothing she can do. She tried. She was definitely paying attention to most on their team. But yeah, she's screwed. Hit her with the finisher. Just like that. <laughs> So, this is a little bit of what you can be doing, what you can be thinking. I hope I introduced some of the concepts to you. Things I would recommend staying away from, um, especially early. I would recommend staying away from possessing cars because you don't get a lot of value out of it. Possessing cars is really when you're trying to hit them in a time crunch, not when you're just generally trying to mess with them because it's very expensive. Another thing that I would recommend you do while you play is pay attention to your infernal energy. Because if I back up a little bit here, if I were to have tried to take over a unit here when I don't really have a lot of infernal energy left, I'm not going to be able to do a lot with it. That's a mistake I see people do a lot, is they'll try to spawn a unit, but then they only have, I don't know, 30 energy left. And then once they take over that unit, they use up all their energy right away, and the unit dies, and they don't get anything out of it. So make sure you have ample infernal energy left if you're going to try to possess a unit so you can actually get a little bit out of your juice there. Now, I want to be super clear here. There is a lot of depth to this game, so don't expect things to always stay super easy. The survivors are going to get smarter. So what you're going to have to do is, one work on your own strategies work on your own flow but also consider coming into here to get some upgrades you can go and do a lot of different upgrading in this book here there's really nice things like increasing the health and the stumble resistance of your elite units there could be funny things for skeletons attacking more often buffing your boss etc etc each one of these demons has a whole skill tree to themselves so i recommend you check it out and if you want to power level one of your demons here take a look at these points i have in the top right hand corner if i were to go ahead and hold down the f button i'll spend spirit points and what that'll do is it in the bottom right hand corner just made it so i leveled up my necromancer again i use up some of these points which you get every time you play and then you can go ahead and power level because you will passively level every single time you go and play a character but you can also power level them that way too if i want to prioritize a certain demon or a certain survivor now we're going to go into much more depth and have some more advanced guides and really again dive deep into each one of these characters here and if you want to see that please subscribe down below we'll have you covered here also if you want to learn a little bit more as we go i stream just about every single night twitch.tv slash swing point we're going to be learning a lot about the game we're going to be doing viewer games all sorts of fun stuff over there so link will be in the description and also the top comment and again thank you guys i hope you joined this community this has been a really fun game to play so far and i can't wait to teach you more about it we've done games like this resident evil resistance friday the 13th dead by daylight evolve back for blood we've gotten really deep in a lot of different games so we're very familiar with the scene and we can teach you a lot so thank you guys you're the best and i'll see you in the next video that we do around here